All right. Good morning, folks. Uh, this is Coffee with Community Services. It is March 17th, uh, 11.03 a.m. My name is John Decker, the Director of Community Services at Alta California Regional Center. And we've got quite a few folks on this morning. And um, just a little housekeeping as we um, have experienced some new uh, new excitement this week when it comes to uh, hosting our Zoom meetings where we have had uh, multiple Zoom bombers come in to disrupt uh, our, our meetings that we've had, our board meeting and our client advisory committee meetings. So we're going to see if uh, this uh, Zoom link ends up having the same issues. I do have um, Michelle Duchesne as a co-host here who is just absolutely ready to kick people out of the meeting and uh, mute them and uh, enable a waiting room if we need to. But um, we don't want this to turn into a webinar type of thing. One of the things that's nice about this is having ser uh, service providers be able to be part of a conversation as opposed to being kind of just talked at. And so um, we want to figure out a way to make sure that we can still offer the flexibility of this meeting, but also don't end up with some of the unfortunate things that we dealt with um, earlier this week. So um, with that being said, I do want to introduce, we've got uh, 57 folks on right now. So let me go ahead and introduce some of our community services staff on. And then we'll uh, go for, I think we'll have some case management folks here as well. So um, from our community services department, I see Adriana, good morning, and Alicia, our HCBS specialist, and Jason, our lead in community services, and uh, Michelle uh, Shane, one of our community services managers, and Isabella and Shirley, two of our specialists in community services, and Christy Schaefer as well, another specialist, and I see Carly on here, our um, client employment specialist. And let's see, I don't see any one of ours on the page two from community services. So um, from our client services, I see uh, our client services managers, we've got a few on. So I see Cindy Lay on. So good morning, Cindy and Laura um, and Kanisha. Good morning. Um, I see Dana as always. Dana is a, a, a faithful participant in our Coffee with Community Services sessions. And let's see. Do, 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 do. Danny, did I introduce you already or did I miss you? I hope I didn't miss you already. I'll say hi to Danny this morning too. You missed me, but I'm here. <laughs> All right, perfect, very good. Don't want to miss you too much. And uh, let's see, I see Hannah on. So good morning, Hannah. And Carol is on here. We've got Associate Client Services Director. So we got Tracy on this morning. Good morning, Tracy. We've got Director of Client Services. We've got Jennifer Bloom and we've got Michelle Johnson on this morning. And we have our clinical director, clinical and intake, um, Camilla is on here as well. And I hope I didn't miss any of the other Alta staff that are on. If you just like start waving your hand in my face, I'm like, oh, Wyatt, oh, I, oh, I feel like I, I, I saw you smile before you put your hand up. And so I didn't miss you completely. But uh, Wyatt Stroman as well, one of our uh, client services managers as well. Let's see. And I see Faye Tate on here, another uh, associate client service director, and Jen Bonner's on. Good morning, Jan, too. All right, so we are going to talk about a few different things today. We are going to discuss our Valley Mountain um, Alta California Regional Center DSP Collaborative and some of the upcoming activities that are going around that. Um, we're going to talk about just an update on HCBS again um, and uh, the HCBS grants, specifically the HCBS grants that we have. We um, are going to touch on the POS disparity meetings that are coming up uh, as well. Uh, we had a residential vendor forum, so we'll do a little update on that. We also had, um, I think, a good discussion about um, intermediate care facilities as well a couple weeks ago and also in our um, provider advisory committee meeting, the PAC meeting last Thursday. And so we can uh, touch on um, intermediate care facilities and the transition from um, uh, fee-for-service Medi-Cal to um, managed care Medi-Cal. And let's see, we have upcoming vendor forums. And then I know Carly and I have been kind of ongoing discussions working with Sierra College. So we'll give you guys a little update on what's going on there as well. And then I'll, I will have our case management and just folks think about it. If there's anything that the uh, directors want to share, um, you guys are welcome to uh, share anything with that too. And I'll talk a little bit about that, uh, the Abilities Expo that I attended last week and kind of some of our stuff that we're looking at with assistive technology. And if there's additional agenda items, please don't hesitate to just stick them in the chat and then we're happy to, to jump on them. I know um, 
transportation might be a, a topic of discussion just because of the challenges that we're facing at our regional center and what I'm finding regional centers are facing statewide um, with transportation as well. So, um, so what I'm going to start off with is talking about the DSP collaborative uh, vendor events that are coming up. And uh, oh gosh, is Garrett the only member of our collaborative that is on here right now? I think so. I think he's the only service provider that's part of the collaborative. But um, we've been working with Valley Mountain Regional Center um, to promote DSP hiring for, um, sorry, just one second. See if that'll spotlight it there. Sorry, there we go. Um, and so we have some events to kick off our activities for our DSP collaborative. I'm going to share my screen real quickly. And on the screen here is um, the two opportunities to attend. So it's a DSP collaborative uh, vendor event. It's a screening of the documentary Invaluable. It's going to be here at Alt California Regional Center. Um, and it's going to be Wednesday, March 22nd from 1 to 3. So once again, Wednesday, March 22nd, 1 to 3. Um, and then there's also going to be one down at Valley Mountain Regional Center next Friday. So mm -hmm. I will actually be host. And this all came out um, via email to folks that are signed up on our website. But I will also drop the information into the chat box so you can sign up to say that you are going to attend. We do want folks to sign up and let us know. Um, some of you have been to our large conference room and know that we can't really accommodate more than 80 or 90 people in there very comfortably. Um, and so just want to encourage folks, you know, you're, we want to um, certainly include uh, possibly some DSPs, but more than anything else, you know, we want to have your, um, your company show up and, and again, get us in this, this kickoff for this DSP collaborative that we are doing. The um, job fairs are also coming up as well. And we'll, let's see. Carly, I think you might have the flyers saved for the job fairs. Is that right? With the URL code on it and everything? Yeah, I do. Are you able to share your screen with that um, job fair as well? Yeah. So the idea of the job fair was for service providers to really provide a industry specific and really a regional center vendor specific career expo. And so that's what, you know, those are the one, only folks that are invited to be able to participate in this is uh, the people that are um, uh, regional center vendors. Let me ask, uh, and, well, and so what you can see there is we do have some partners on this, which is uh, SETA program and California um, Department of Human Development is on there. And so there are two co-sponsors that we have for this event that is coming up as well. So we really want folks to participate in the kickoff event, and then we really want folks to participate in this job fair as well. And Carly, if you could scroll up a little bit, I think we could get the date again on there. Oh, are you guys, I clicked the link. Did you, did it not follow the it link? It did not, no, oh, I didn't okay. uh, launch the link. Okay, well, I'll scroll up. <laughs> yeah, so then um, there's a couple things that you can do. One is you can um, capture that URL like um, right there, and um, that will allow you to, I don't know if I can make that any bigger when I, well, you can make it bigger on your screen, but if uh, if you click the URL, you should be able to click on that and be able to scan it and sign up for, I'm going to do it right now, make sure it works. There it is right there. So put your, your phone up there, click on it, and then you can register right away. It goes right to the Survey Monkey. Very easy. Um, so just want to encourage folks um, again to participate in the job fair, the, the career expo, uh, participate in the um, the kickoff event that we're going to be having as well. Oh, this will show you what it goes to after you click on that. You want to run us through it real quick? Yeah. So um, if you either scan the QR code or um, there is also a link down um, further down on the flyer that you can click, it will take you to this page um, to register. Um, you can select, um, you plan to attend either the Sacramento event or the event in Lodi on June 15th for both events. Um, whether or not you are coming as a job seeker or an employer. And then just put in your information. And that's it. Thank you, Carly. So some of you, um, 
you know, may remember that the regional centers were given a certain budget last year in order to implement HCBS with service providers. And at that time, we made an argument to DDS that if you really want to be able to, um, you know, support service providers to meet HCBS compliance, they need enough staff to be able to do it. Um, when you don't have enough staff, that's when you end up having to have not individualized programming. That's when you have more congregate type of settings that go in. It's just, it's the reality of not having the staff to support individual training, individual services and supports that someone would have. So that was our argument why this aligned with HCBS. And again, um, part of this is, so we have the kickoff event, that's next week. We hope that folks will come to Alta and participate in that. Then we have the job fairs, but then we also have a website that we are putting together as well. And that website is a place where in one, one, on one website, we can have jobs available from regional center vendors from Valley Mountain Regional Centers area and from, um, uh, what do you call it? And from uh, Alta California Regionals area. What we've shared with folks before is that the website looks somewhat similar or is kind of modeled off of the DSP Ohio website. And so our website is very much in a um, kind of a, is a bit of a work in progress. And so we're not quite ready to preview it today, but I did just want to share with folks that this is kind of the gen general idea of the website where there's information about the DSP staffing challenges that are going on. And then just to, you know, the map is of the counties of uh, Alta California Regional Centers, 10 counties, plus the five counties for Valley Mountain Regional Center. And then this would be, you know, Amador da, 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 uh, here on, on this screen. So a little bit of a change, but we liked the way they laid this out so that you can choose by county. Some of the feedback that we've received is, well, what about job fairs elsewhere? Like, what about a Grass Valley job fair? Or what about a Auburn job fair? What about a Placerville? job fair. So those are all things I think that we can talk about moving forward. But this was our first opportunity to really do a job fair that is really just specifically for this field, specifically to support you service providers that are running into so many challenges and also that have so much competition from other um, entities as well. So for example, you know, when we do job fairs and we have Amazon there or we have, you know, SMUD or other hires, hiring uh, folks there, uh, you know, it, it Again, that's not competition that we're interested in uh, inside the, these types of job fairs. So really want to encourage folks to participate in the job fairs, uh, participate in the kickoff event, and then, you know, also work to get yourself onto the website as well so that you can, um, you know, put your job listing there. Um, any feedback or questions as it relates to this, these collaborative efforts? Um, Joey Travolta has also done some nice video work for us as well. Some of you are familiar with how he does um, his filming with the crew of individuals that have developmental disabilities that are the ones that actually do it. So we had a great opportunity to get um, a meeting or get a, a video done with them as well that's gonna complement um, all of our activities here. So again, just wanna encourage folks, this is a, a big thing for the regional center to um, put our time into and we really hope that it leads to good outcomes. You know, we want to see more applicants coming towards you as service providers. That is the big goal of all of this is is more applicants coming in. With that being said, before I transition away too far from this, um, I, I just wanna check in with folks and find out about hiring and what people are seeing as far as hiring right now. Um, are we seeing any improvement to hiring? Are we seeing people actually showing up for interviews? Are we still getting ghosted constantly? Would anyone be willing to share kind of how, I, and, I, and I, this is very important for us because when we're talking about not having transportation sometimes, or we're talking about uh, a lot of the, the challenges that our clients face, it's good to hear from the service providers what you are all experiencing, especially when you've got this many folks from case management on here as well. So can would anyone be a, a brave one today and uh, let us know a little bit about how the interviews and hiring are going, you know, and whether or not it's improving at all. Um, and so I'll throw that out there for folks. Hey, John. Right. Go ahead, Garrett, and then Andrea. I saw Andrea yeah. on mute, so that means that that's the same as putting her hand up. Go ahead, Garrett. Yeah. Um, well, two things. One is uh, if you haven't signed up for the uh, DSP Collaborative, please do. 
Uh, John, you mentioned that uh, both regional centers have ponied up some money through through the grants, and um, you know, I just um, it's one thing to have a good idea and to say let's work together. And so, um, big thank you to ACRC and to VMRC for putting together what was it, one hundred fifty, two hundred thousand dollars. It was about two hundred thousand, yeah. Yeah, so this is going to be a huge asset. Um, so please, if you haven't yet, join us and and avail yourselves of the resource and the resources coming down the line as well. Um, as far as hiring, uh, I think at our worst that uh, we had like a 10% show up rate for interviews. Um, it's improved to about one in three. Um, so, you know, like 35%. Um, and, uh, and we've done really well in hiring. I, I, um, our vacancy rate is under 5%. We have a couple of really persistent, um, vacancies in one particular home, but other than that, we're doing, we're doing well and we're able to accept referrals and, and do placements now. Um, but that's been pretty recent. That's been within the last four months or so. Thank you very much. Um, Andrea, you've got a bunch of positions that you need to hire, right? Yeah, and I also had a question about the um, the flyer for that job fair. Um, yeah, to get the let's start with that. But I did. Is that flyer going to go out? Because when you do the QR code, it just takes you to like say if you're going to go somewhere, but it doesn't tell you where the Sacramento event is on that one. But the flyer oh. that you showed did. So I would like to attend. <laughs> I need to tell my HR. Um, Okay, so and that's for the actual job. You have the job fair flyer, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I got the other piece, um, and yeah, so I, too soon to tell if anything's better. This is like very anecdotal. We have yeah a ton, like over a hundred or so positions to fill. We've had the most. Um, it's gonna sound really sad. We've had the the most attendance to uh, orientation last week of four whole people. So that was it, and most and those. Uh, Actually, for our CTP program, which is is nice because we just got that increase, but it's people coming back, or folks referring people, which is traditionally kind of our um, where people come from. So enticing others from outside that haven't worked here before or know someone who works here is still difficult. So that's the job fair might be interesting for that piece. So first thing we need to make sure is that the job fair flyer has actually gone out. I thought that we sent that out from Alta to everyone. But I got the collaborative one and not the job fair one. I just checked before I asked out loud too. <laughs> Same. I keep I keep looking for it so I can send it to um, my HR department and recruiter. But um, but I'm just seeing the the um, come watch the you know the event instead of the job fair. Okay, so we will. I'll, I will verify. Because we want, let me see real quick. I'm going to share my screen so I can share. Okay, so this is the one that folks need then. Whoops. Oh, I just lost it. It's these these ones right here. So the disability. Okay. All right. So we'll verify and uh, we can make sure that this goes out to all the mm -hmm. um service providers on our list uh, before the end of the day today. We'll get it and make sure that it's out to everyone. Yeah, and again, I, we're, we're certainly hoping that this does, um, that this is impactful. Um, we're gonna be doing a lot of advertising in advance of it, hoping to draw a lot of people into the job fairs. So um, looking forward to that. So let's see. Um, Let's go over to the chat because I think we've got some comments in there that I want to touch on. Let's see. So where the da, 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 with the disparity in pay, it's getting a lot harder to help individualize hire individuals hire HSS staff. Even with direct hires for SLS, we're still getting ghosted or even worse. They come for all the training and the client gets invested and then they disappear. Yeah, it, it's not really just about hiring these fa these staff, right? It's about retaining people as well and making sure that. You know, especially in an SLS arrangement where it's, you know, so individualized, um, that's a big challenge when you um, are having that turnover that's going on. Um, let's see, we have um, in the chat, yes, I have not seen the fair flyer either from Michelle Ramirez. Yeah, so we'll make sure that that gets out today to everyone. Uh, transportation has been getting a little bit better now that more programs are coming on more days a week. 
and for the job fair, can we get some time on the radio to get interest? Yeah, we're, we're working on a, a whole media blitz. We have a media consultant that was part of the money that the regional center was able to use from the HCBS grant to be able to do that. So that'll be part of that promotion. And um, so a couple of different things that are kind of in the chat as well. One is, um, which is not uncommon, right? The uh, utilization of IHSS as the generic resource for um, supported living and the challenge that uh, is kind of inherent in that. Um, and then also, as uh, Tanya Nally says, the uh, though there it looks like there's uh, additional applications are coming in for um, people that want to work in a license setting, they are still waiting for the, the long delay in fingerprint clearances uh, that are coming through as well. So um, again, I just, you know, it is important for us to be on the same page and kind of know what's going on with your ability to fill those vacancies that you have. And we understand that residential care, things like SLS, but even across the board, ILS, day programs, transportation, you know, children's services, it's all very impactful when we're short on staff and don't have the ability to to meet all the shifts that we need to. I do see the note in here from Tony um, from T&D Transportation related to just transportation seeming to get better. Um, I will say there's just so many people that are requesting new transportation right now. And um, what we are hearing from folks is that this is a statewide issue where there is just not the transportation providers to be able to um, accept all of the rides that are being offered right now. I believe I talked to Helen Neary, uh, who's not able to be with us here today. She's been out sick this week, and um, but she oversees the transportation services. And that's one of the things that we've talked about is um, getting together with you transportation providers sometime in the next couple of weeks, because we need to, I think, have a further discussion because we're getting so many rejections for um, routes that are being um, requested, so many rides. And so that, that really is making it a, a big challenge for us right now in matching people and getting people started. So um, more to come on that. Um, and so hiring wise, I feel like, um, you know, we are starting to see, um, at least at Alta, we're getting, I, I would say some good applicants for positions. We're getting a lot of outside candidates now people seem to be showing up for uh, their job interviews and seem to be showing up for their first day at work. There was certainly some weird things that happened during COVID where people just disappeared um, during th that process um, and didn't didn't show up or didn't show up on the first day. But I think things are getting a little bit better um, as it relates to that. Anything else about the job fairs or hiring issues that people want to talk about? Um, if there's a specific thing that is working well for you and you feel like you want to share that with other people, you're, you're welcome to do that uh, too. But granted, there are, you know, like 70 of you on and many of you are competing for some of the same candidates out in, in certain areas as well, right? Um, that's, that's very much the case. So we talked about um, the big HCBS grant, which is the uh, money that we put towards this DSP collaborative, but then there's some other smaller, D uh, did I say DSP, HCBS grants. And then there's some other smaller HCBS grants. So Carol has been, uh, is one of the people that, Carol Watello is one of the people that was awarded one of the HCBS grants. And you got to have a little fun doing some uh, uh, field trips on behalf of the regional center. And I don't think we've had an opportunity to have you explain about that real quick. So would you be willing to just share kind of what your uh, what your charge was? You know, what was your what was your grant for and kind of um, how these activities went? Sure, thanks. Um, so we received funds from the regional center to do some HCBS training um, and we are going to be putting together um, both uh, group trainings on values-based service provision, transitioning services, um, individualized services, employment-focused services, and then along with those group trainings, one-to-one -one, um, supports for both providers as well as for individuals and family members on how to look for the services that you want. What should they look like? How, how can you find out if, if they're gonna meet your needs? So those kinds of things. Um, uh, but as part of the first part of that, we worked with uh, Alicia, who is a rock star, um, and uh, 
got a ton of work done um, and were able to go out and meet with a few mostly residential providers, assisting them in completing their documentation um, for HCBS compliance. And it was it was a really good opportunity. I, I felt like to um, talk with them about some of their concerns and talk with them about how to get the documentation done, but also on what, what will things look like, how will things be different, and how can they comply with, with the new rules, talk a little bit about um, you know, the values behind them and stuff. And everybody was really open and, um, and great for the most part, mo other than being slightly nervous about the process, um, everybody was really receptive and ended up getting all their documentation in. <laughs> and we're we're going to be having a kickoff to kind of talk about, you know, what are the next steps and how to be involved um, with both what we're doing, what Steps doing, and what Southside um, is doing. Um, I think end of April sometime. We don't have a date, right? Yeah, I think Alicia is working on that. We're going to, and we'll throw it over to Alicia um, to give us more of an update on kind of some of the grant or grant activities slash uh, further HCBS activities. But one thing, you know, we, we mobilized as a regional center system and within a relatively short period of time across the state, we were able to work with service providers to have them, you know, put in their program designs put in writing that they are going to be following these uh, federal guidelines and following H HCBS guidance. But then but then people have to actually do it. Like it's one thing to say you are going to do it. It's a different thing to actually do it. And then it's another thing for us to be informed enough at the regional center to identify whether or not people are doing it or not. And I think that's one of the things Alicia is working on right now is trying to help with our staff so that they can identify those things. So. I, I think that's neat. I'm, I, you know, I don't know what the Department of Developmental Services is planning. I don't, I don't know that there's going to be this big push and, and to get everything, you know, everyone in compliance the same way it was to get people in paper compliance, which is kind of what this last step was. But um, Alicia, maybe you can talk. I'm, I'm excited about kind of the next steps as it relates to this. So I was wondering if maybe you can talk about kind of some of the things you're working on right now. Yeah, um, I will start with grants. Um, so right now we are working on closing out all of those 2020 to 2021 grants. Um, the projects have to be completed by the 31st of March so that we can get them billed and off of the list. Um, I'm also reaching out to all the 2021, 2022 and those 2022 special grant recipients um, to set up quarterly meetings, grant kickoffs, get their timelines nailed down um, so that they can finish those projects by next March. Um, and then we have submitted the 2022-2023 sort of what we have determined we would like to see to DDS. Um, and we are waiting for them to respond to us to give us the all clear. So if you were one of those people who submitted a grant proposal by February 21st, um, you will hear back from us uh, as soon as we hear back from BDS. Um, so that's where we are with grants. So if you have an outstanding grant um, that you haven't completely billed, um, you, you'll be hearing from me either today or next week early. Um, as far as other HCBS stuff that's going on, um, I've been doing a lot of staff trainings at unit meetings. I'm going to be attending the residential liaison training coming up. SDP units training um, to work on the staff side of things. Um, I also do pres I present at the new higher orientation here too. Um, and I am also working on updating all of our documents to be HCBS compliant, our residential agreement, our Title 17s, our quarterlies, um, all that good stuff. Yeah, you realize once you start making changes like this, how many different things have to get changed on your paperwork and all the different procedures that we have. So so thank you, HCBS is not done just because we got ourselves into 100% compliance, which I am so excited about. We'll put a little feature in the newsletter about it as well. Um, again, really mm -hmm. lots of work from um, uh, our community services specialists and from Alicia and 
Uh, we certainly appreciate the work that Carol did uh, as well with the PEC crew to get things uh, helped out with, especially those, some of those residential providers that were having some challenges. Um, yeah, it was, it was a lot um, that needed to get done. And now it's, you know, making sure that we follow through with it and look at the next steps. And so, um, again, I, I appreciate it. We'll do a feature in the newsletter about getting to 100%. Um, there's still a few regional centers that are close, but not quite there yet. And um, I guess, what can I say? We, we did receive a letter um, about the final action for non-compliant vendors. Um, unfortunately, it did not come out from the Department of Developmental Services until after we had already gotten all of our vendors um, completely done. Um, but they did put out uh, information that if you um, had not... Uh, had not gotten, what is it, not gotten into com compliance that they were going to do a 50% hold on your billing. Um, and so that did not need to apply to any of our vendors because all of our vendors got done. Um, so again, um, I'm w even a few weeks ago when we were putting people on do not refers because we hadn't had the documentation in, like even that was very short lived. It was like for a day or two. Um, and then Alicia was able to get people right back off of that. So um, again, just to appreciate all the hard work that service providers did and certainly all the hard work at the regional center to get us to that compliance and uh, compliance is going to be an ongoing, you know, um, requirement. So it's not like I get compliant and then I don't ever need to change or update things because when you serve new clients, when you serve clients with different types of needs and desires, then you're going to have to look at it through that, um, that lens of HCBS and making sure that what you're offering them um, is in line with that. So that's why, you know, again, it's not like a checkbox, like I am HCBS compliant and I'm going to always be, because it's really in how you deliver your services as well. And that does, when you individualize your services, change when you add new participants on. So um, anyways, I just, again, wanted to shout out all of you that worked so hard um, on that HCBS and, and it'll still keep going. What Alicia was talking about previously is that we used to have the HCBS grant program that many of you might remember, where we actually had grants that were uh, given out and, and it was a, a much more formalized process. So we were, we're closing the books out on the, that previous uh, fiscal year um, here. And, and so again, if you get contacted, please get back in touch because um, our accounting folks really want to make sure that we either get all that money spent or that we can let DDS know kind of what's going on with it. All right. Speaking of um, money and letting things know what's going on with it, we have, let me find my calendar here. So um, I'm going to share my screen again, and I'm going to share for, um, let's see, we have an upcoming events calendar. And so these are some of the events. And I want to talk with folks about this calendar. So real, real quickly here, because there's things that are not on this calendar, and maybe, maybe they should be. So um, I'm just going to go to the Alta's main page so you can see how I'm navigating to the calendar. Go to menu and then the events and calendar right there. And you can read the events this way, or you can just hit the view calendar like I like to do. And then you can see the upcoming activities. So we have an activity on Tuesday, which is the annual purchase of service expenditure and demographic data meeting. And so this is a meeting that we have had every year. We used to do it in person. We've been doing it uh, virtually since COVID and that has really worked out well. We've been able to get um, quite a lot of people to participate in the meeting, whereas before and when we did it in person, we had just like a, a few people that uh, would attend. So this is something that you can register in advance for. There are two different sessions. There's a five to seven o'clock session and there's a two to 3.30 session. Um, we've discussed it, I think, in this meeting, but um, Elijah Jenkins, who used to be um, uh, our service coordinator for Porterville Developmental Center. We go down there very frequently and back. Um, he has changed positions. He got his master's degree in data science. And so he is working as a systems operator for us now. And um, wh what that means is that we really have a specialist in looking at data um, and being able to look at data, present data. And so Elijah is going to be playing a role in presenting this information for the uh, POS disparity meeting. So just want to encourage folks, you are certainly welcome to attend that. And then um, I'm going to just show the calendar again and maybe talk about some of the other events that we've got upcoming and then um, just try to get some feedback here. So um, 
we have the DSP collaborative event. Obviously, we talked about that. That's the one that is at Alta right here. And this is the one that is at Valley Mountain Regional Center. So that'll be next Friday. So when you see me next Friday, we'll be, uh, I'll try to, maybe I'll try to see if I can get Valley Mountain, uh, someone from Valley Mountain in with me, but um, I will be doing the meeting down at Valley Mountain Regional Center um, because I'll be down there for the event, uh, the DSP Collaborative event. So we'll have coffee with community services uh, live from Valley Mountain Regional Center's offices. And you can see some of the additional things. We have the self-determination program webinar. Uh, the ARCA is putting together a webinar intended for families to talk about self-determination. Uh, I know we've sent out flyers um, for folks about that as well, but just want to encourage people to participate in that. And you can see some of our other activities. One of the things I wanted to ask folks is, is do folks think that they would like to see our vendor forums put on this agency calendar like this, like which upcoming vendor forums that we are going to be planning on having. Um, that will mean we'll need to make it so that you have to register uh, in order to participate in it. But um, is that something that folks might be interested in? Again, we announce vendor forums, we send out emails, but we don't really have a centralized calendar to like to show when the upcoming ones are. So. Um, we're, we're, we might look at trying that out for, we've got uh, ILS Vendor Forum on April 17th, which I see we do not have on the calendar, mm -hmm. here on this uh, on this calendar. So um, what do folks think? Would they like to see a, a calendar like this that has all of the uh, vendor forums laid out on there? No, the chat says. Yeah? Oh, the chat says yes? Okay, if the chat says yes, then then I think that's a good idea. All right, right on. So um, let's have a discussion with Herman about that and see if we can get those on here. And then that'll, the only thing I'm noticing is, is that with our calendar, it does not seem like you can download, I think you have to probably log into the um, Zoom first, but it's not like you can download it to your own calendar from here, but at least it's one spot where you can find all the things that are upcoming. We do have our board of directors meeting coming up a little bit later this month. We'll be going over uh, updates on our strategic plan, where we are at as far as the status on that. Um, I know uh, Carly and Michelle have been working on updating the employment section with uh, Jennifer Bloom as well. And then I know I've got the um, housing section that I've been working on. And then um, everything else is uh, Michelle Johnson, I think. Michelle been very is very busy when it comes to the, the, the stuff for the um, strategic plan. So. Um, that will be coming up there towards the end of the month as well. We had, oh, let me stop sharing my screen. Well, maybe I can keep sharing my screen. I'm going to touch on the Abilities Expo. So I had an opportunity last week, and the reason why I missed our Coffee with Community Services is that I was in Los Angeles, and I was at the Abilities Expo. Are you guys able to see this on your screen? Yeah, thank you. So, um, let me explain why we are interested in this and then i saw michelle ramirez on there so i hope she's still around because she got to go to a place that i didn't get to go to this weekend so um abilities expo was held down at the la convention center it was on friday saturday and sunday i was able to go friday um and saturday um and able to really get to meet people one of the things um so a couple of different things that we're doing one is some of you are familiar that we are developing multifamily housing projects. One of those multifamily housing projects is called Mirasol Village. It's on Richards Boulevard in Sacramento. And within that um, uh, home, excuse me, within that complex, we have one of the set aside units that is going to be an assistive technology demonstration unit, meaning that we will have assistive technology there in that home for an individual. We got to $10,000 grant to buy equipment um, for that uh, client. And um, then that home will be visitable. So like some of you, like maybe you're, a, 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 you run a supported living agency and you might wanna look at having um, uh, assistive technology in one of your client's homes. Then you can go over and take a look at the demonstration unit and you can see kind of what it looks like, see it in, you know, in, in action. The independent living centers have similar things as well for um, aging folks. They've got um, demonstration uh, sites where you can try out different type of assistive technology. We have that going on. And then some of you are also familiar with the, that the state of California has a, a $5 million pilot, which is to look at the feasibility of providing assistive technology um, in the state of California and being able to um, 
increase the reliance on the staff, you know, th deal with the workforce challenges that we have, um, provide just enough supports that people need, um, provide access to people for bilingual services more. And so they have this, uh, this is the, uh, a much larger project. So we have our, our small $10,000 project and then we have this big $5 million project. And so we're working with the Department of Developmental Services we are looking at uh, contracting with some service providers uh, for that, and, and that would be like SLS, ILS providers. And then we are also looking at um, working with some technology companies to train staff on how to utilize the assistive technology. So all of that, um, I am not an assistive technology expert, and so I needed to go down there and re really learn and meet people and see what's going on. And before we did, because um, the Department of Developmental Services joined me at the Abilities Expo on Friday as we created a little QR code that I had on my phone. My assistant, Zach, set it up. And so um, as we talked to and met with any of the assistive technology vendors, we asked them to sign up for a brief Google survey. And that, in essence, kind of gets them on a list of possible people that we might want to contract with when we have assistive technology more widely spread amongst people with developmental disabilities. And so I know I was able to get 10 people to sign up um, while I was there and uh, lots of neat things. The one was a, um, think about people like, um, th there's a, a walker that they have that uses facial recognition technology. So if it sees your face, it will navigate towards you in the room. So it will literally drive its little self right over to you when it sees your face. Um, and so there's, you can imagine there's a lot of applications for that. Um, if you've had to live in a house with someone that has a walker or ambulation uh, support needs. Another one was um, a set of smart glasses uh, that you can wear that controls like your wheelchair, but can also control your smart home devices as well. And so just a little thing that you can either have a special pair of glasses or you can have an add on to your glasses that you can use to be able to do that. So um, we had a assistive technology vendor down there that does a lot of things utilizing um, I like iPads, lots of different app based things. Um, and uh, so I again, I learned a lot. I had an opportunity to sit on on some of the workshops. They had a lot of other like neat things that are you know not exactly assistive technology, but they had, for example, like a physical therapist there that had a a powered exoskeleton. So basically like uh, it was it was attached to all of his muscles and as he walked, the machine walked right next to him and you can wear that and it can support you through your rehab activities. So again, lots of really innovative technology that people are doing and we've uh, I was able to make a bunch of connections with folks while we were down there. During around the same time, they also had the uh, CSU Northridge event as well. And I think Michelle and some of her team were able to go down there for that. So Michelle, did you uh, find what you were looking for down there? Yeah, you know, uh, that, that's the uh, University of Northridge um, and they have a center, of dis center on disabilities. And um, some of the sessions were very techy, so they were uh, very much over our head, but it was so fascinating between the expo, seeing the current things that people can use and then the upcoming technology that people are working on and engineers are working on, it was pretty, we left pretty inspired. It's, it's just really cool to see that, to know that in, in a few years from now, there's going to be so many things uh, that we are going to be able to utilize in the, in this industry. Um, there's just so much with even um, Microsoft Word and some of the things that are coming with Google and um, to, to make sure that when you create a document, even that it, that it does an accessibility check. It, there's just so many things I can't even begin to tell you, you know, that devices that people can use, not to mention organizational tools that you can use in your own program. So yeah, we were, we were pretty excited when we left and pretty inspired. Great, uh, muted there. So you can watch the, a lot of the uh, CSU Northridge stuff online. They were, they were videoing things. I, I tried to watch some stuff live, but I got a little bit too busy, like the keynote address and things. But um, certainly that is a big conference as well. Um, and certainly something that might look at possibly next year for us to participate in as we expand our interest in this area. But again, we're not talking about getting rid of DSPs, right? This is not talking about eliminating 
because there, that's an impossibility. But really what we're talking about is providing just those supports that people need. And um, one of our board members um, brought it up during our board meeting where we had our board committee meetings. And she said, you know, I, I she was really helpful that we were doing this because she said, I did this myself. She's like, I enabled reminders on my phone. I enabled uh, other, uh, on, on smart devices and that cut down on my hours of support. She said, because I set up other ways to be able to be informed that I need to do things like my medication checks and everything else. So I think for us, you know, we need to learn more about this, certainly as a regional center. Um, we certainly would, you know, as we look at promoting this, you know, there will be a time for us to do more training with our, you know, our case management staff and our, our service coordinators because, you know, some assistive technology is available. I know that right now DRC is um, put out some guidance about how to best be able to get it through Medi-Cal, for example, for different assistive technology um, equipment. So anyways, stay tuned. We're very excited about assistive technology. We'll be learning more about it and uh, hopefully bringing, bringing it to some homes near you. Um, we are looking at, um, as we said, um, getting into contract with some service providers. And uh, as we do, we'll share more information with folks about that. This uh, pilot is going to run through June of 2025 from um, the Department of Developmental Services. We had um, an idea of a vendor forum for ASL. You wanna talk about that one real quick? Yeah. They, 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 they can hear you. Sorry. I'm in the same office. So Rima's not able to be on today, um, but she has brought to me um, an idea of a forum for any vendors that have ASL, um, that offer ASL support. So kind of having a round table come together and discuss some resources and some other uh, things that she wanted to present. And I don't have all of that with me, but I can make sure to talk to Rima so she can discuss that at our next copy. Um, we're looking at scheduling something like that in June. And we're hoping that we have um, a lot of providers that are interested in that so that we can have those you know, um, twice a year, if not quarterly, depending on the interest. Cool. I, I, and again, I think that's a great idea. I just learned about that today. And so I think there's a lot of ways to talk about shared practices and what's working and what's not. And, you know, for those that have uh, maybe a number of deaf staff on staff, you know, there's best practices there um, as well. So again, just uh, want to encourage folks. We want to uh, expand the opportunities for um, ASL services to be uh, you know, given to our growing population of clients. So stay tuned for that. We'll, uh, we'll get the information out. We said June, right? Yeah. June or July. Right. Okay. Uh, upcoming vendor forums. We have ILS vendor forum on April 17th and that's at 10 a.m., yeah. right? 10 to, noon. 10 to noon. Maybe we'll get that one on our agency calendar mm -hmm. so people can uh, see that on there as well. We did, uh, it's been a couple weeks now, but we did, or it was a couple weeks, I guess, that we did uh, have a meeting with ICF providers and got some information from them about the switch over from uh, managed care, or excuse me, from fee-for-service to managed care Medi-Cal. Um, definitely working through issues that have been brought up as it relates to it. It sounds like we've been able to get some things resolved already. Um, but I would just say for any of you providers that are on here, um, you know, please don't hesitate. Make sure you're contacting the service coordinators we did make it clear in that meeting that if you're not hearing from the service coordinator, please include that manager in your correspondence as well. We, do, we don't want periods of time to go by where people are missing their services because, for example, they've gotten switched over early to manage care Medi-Cal when they weren't supposed to get switched over until the beginning of 2024. So um, I know that's very specific to um those service providers but um again it's something that is it is a really impactful for those um because for the ones that have switched over it's really tough to do anything because the fee for the managed care folks don't really have the authorization to do anything yet with those clients and then they're no longer served on the fee for service side so um there is a process i understand it's going out via email to folks on how to get this resolved Is there a way that Alta can create an auto respond for an email address when a service coordinator leaves? Anyone from case management want to chime in on that? I, my thought, my understanding was, is that what that's what our process was? Are we finding out uh, that that's not going on? 
Lindsay is saying it's not going on. Andrea is saying it's not going on. All right. Well, Michelle Ramirez says it's not going on. I see a lot of shaking heads. So uh, Jennifer unmuted herself. I did. Oh, my gosh. Yes, that is our process, John, um, that an auto reply should be going out when the service coordinator has changed, directing the um, email sender to the officer of the day or the client services manager for that unit. So we can certainly remind our teams that that is the expectation so that no one is left hanging. And um, you can always call the front desk too. Um, I hope that you wouldn't have to take that extra step, but you could always call the front desk and ask um, for the manager for that service coordinator that you were working with. Uh, but as I, as I said that, we don't want you to have to go that route. It should be um, something that's easily remedied and just an auto reply. So you would know immediately if someone's on LOA or has retired or whatever the case may be. Hey, Jen, I have a question. So is it, uh, the, is it up to each department manager to, in order to do that um, auto? No, reply? that's an agency expectation. But I mean, is it up to the, um, the actual program, the person supervisor or is it IT's? role to do that? Um, I would need to check our procedure. I think it's incumbent upon the manager to make sure that that out of office reply is put okay. in place. Maybe one of the managers could, who, who does it more frequently could speak to that piece. So Jennifer, I just a little bit of feedback on that. I feel like we do pretty regularly get the auto respond when someone's on leave or okay. when someone's out of office, but when a service recorder, a service coordinator has like left the organization, we, I don't think I've ever seen an auto respond in that situation saying that this person's no longer with all Okay, time. Lindsay, thank you for letting me know that. Yeah. Do any of the managers have anything to add to that? Hi, Am Jay, I it's Rowena. Sorry. Um, client service manager residential, um, that's something that we can talk about internally because when the provider, I'm sorry, when the uh, service coordinator leaves and their email usually deletes sometimes, at least I think for 30 days, but that's something that we can work on with HR. Thank you. That would be so helpful on the provider side and save us a lot of steps. And yeah, absolutely. Like waiting Lindsay, if they don't reach time. out to you within 24 hours, please feel free to call our um, um, our main desk to call, <laughs> to give us a call, okay, our front desk. You. And each of our units have a uh, worker of the day as well. So there's like an on-duty worker for the units too, if you're having trouble reaching folks. <clears throat> Carol, input? There's also, what happens though, is if you do have the out of office thing on there, once you've emailed that once, you'll get that out of office reply, but then you won't necessarily get it the next time you email. So if you didn't remember that that person was out of the office for like a month or whatever, you're not going to get an automatic response if you've already emailed that inbox. I don't know. It's, you, a, it's an Outlook thing. <laughs> so. Okay. All right. Um, anything else? Anything else that we missed? I don't think was there anything on the... I, I think I'm looking at DDS yeah. directives that have come out, not much. Michelle, go ahead. We have a hearing coming up next week, the 23rd, oh, yes. 30. If anybody can come, we would really appreciate it. Um, there's a lot of things um, on the agenda, so um, your presence would be welcomed. We could carpool, whatever you need. I will see you there. The 24th, I think it starts at 9.30, right? 23rd. Or 23rd. I'm going to show up at the wrong time in the wrong place. That's That'd be great. All right. Anything else for the, the good of the group here? Thank you, John. Um, so um, I'm sorry if you touched on this earlier. I had to step away for a minute. Um, but we have about 2,000 COVID tests that we are getting either today or Monday and are ready to distribute to any providers that need them. Um, so I'm putting a link in the chat, which is like a little form that you can fill out. Um, if your organization needs tests, and then we'll reach out to you and, and coordinate getting those to you. And should I send that link to Shirley, John, to get out like to the large, anybody that's not here? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, let's do that. 
Okay. You guys are so good. You know not to send emails to me. Thank you. Uh, yes, you absolutely have to. Um, all right. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. We had three of our service providers that um, volunteered to work with Sacramento County. Sacramento County reached out to Alta saying, hey, we got a bunch of new COVID tests that are in and we'd like to support um, your service providers, your community. So again, these relationships that we've built during COVID are still kind of continuing on and um, appreciate the service providers that uh, stepped up to be willing to do this. So thank you very much. And, and as I mentioned before, you know, we have so many people that cross county lines and things like that between work and where clients live and everything else. So um, just appreciate um, you guys, Lindsay, uh, and doing some distribution to folks. So that's awesome. All right. Well, that, I think that's what we've got for today. I hope to see a bunch of you next week at our kickoff event uh, for the for the um, invaluable film that we're going to be showing here at the regional center. Um, hopefully, you'll come to our POS disparity meetings, and then next Friday, I will be doing this uh, meeting from a conference room at Valley Mountain Regional Center as we get ready to do their. Um... Yeah, Teresa, uh, fill out the survey, and I think that we can we can get it figured out. Um, there's a question about getting some up in Yuba City. And yeah, people can talk to me afterwards if they need to. Yeah, or we have delay. Oh, yeah. Um, Michelle Duchesne is willing to do a delivery to Yuba City, by the way, if anyone needs uh, a test, she's willing to drive up there for folks. So uh, maybe you can have you work with VTE and see what they might have available. So all right. Uh, thank you guys very much and um, look forward to talking to folks next week and have a great weekend. That's true. All right. And Michelle, do you want to give me a call? Yeah. Well, I want to do that. Actually, you know what? Yes. I have, a, I have a meeting starting right now. I just wanted to follow up about the um the assistive technology thing yeah so zach's going to schedule a meeting oh okay for you and uh jackie and tom hines okay perfect i just want to make sure i didn't miss any email threads nope i, I got in touch with tom yesterday and okay. zach's going to schedule a meeting up in the next weekend and a half or so have a nice weekend all right thank you all right.